Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not going to apologize for the Dragon Ball Z music because I am um, I've been listening to the Japanese soundtrack um primarily because I've been doing so much university work and that has been so largely stressful. So I guess we can uh we can get started when people come in here, I guess. If anybody is going to come in here, I'm doing this at a really awkward time. So, you know. I can't imagine that um, most people are going to be here. It's at 2 a.m. Uh, European time. <laughs> Maybe I should have done this some other time. Who knows, though. Maybe when uh, this gets split up into YouTube, I will make different um, kind of sections of the video where people can answer quite or people specifically ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask anything, even if it sounds like a stupid question, because it's probably not. You get settled in on my first Q&A stream. Is 9pm good? I don't know if it's good. I can't tell if it's good. But hey, Tyler, what's up? How's it going? Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, there are so much, like, weird misinformation out there. And my Twitter replies already. It's crazy. Do you May 1st dying inside? I get you. I have uh, two huge projects due on the 10th. And I'm currently shitting it. Hey Mugs, thanks for the follow. I really need to um, get the alerts back up. But whenever I worked on them, they were really, really over the top. And I would want to redo them probably at some point. Not because of that, but you know. But yeah, feel free to ask any questions about Pokemon's production. Um, I've been doing a lot of work trying to look into things, particularly route design. But you know. What the fuck? I don't know what you're studying, but... Seems relatively interesting. I do like how whenever you put Sword and Shield as your category uh, on fucking... Twitch. It's his open world. It's very funny to me. Also, did I fuck up with this graphic? I think I did. No, I didn't. Never mind. But yeah, this is just a, uh, a chill stream. Fire off any notifications. I guess I can answer some questions on Twitter. Did I get to talk to the staff? So... I'm going to pause the uh, the music for a second while I answer questions, maybe. Um, I've talked to a few people that have worked around Pokemon before um, in, like, various areas. This could be, like, the anime, for example. That's, like, mostly um, where a lot of, like, my discussion has been. I'm not, like, breaking any NDAs or anything. It's all just really, like, casual conversation from stuff that I've picked up. Um, but also, this is based off of, like, my own research that... I'll, Pretty much nobody has done. Um, and a lot of guesswork, typically. When, but the guesswork is more so like identifying who has done what in particular games. Because obviously they don't tell us. Credits can only tell a uh, certain story. And also articles and stuff. And also research that I've done and other people have done primarily on the prototypes. Oh my god. I'm getting so much misinformation on Twitter. Saying that a whole different team worked on the DLC. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dearie dear. God, people are getting really mad at Game Freak. 
and it's kind of fucking crazy. But yeah, feel free to uh, to ask me questions while I listen to uh, Dragon Ball Z music. Because I feel like it's weirdly appropriate. I'm just in the mood. Even if your question, like, sounds stupid, don't be afraid to ask it. Do the games have a history of crunch? Yes, absolutely. 100%. So, um... Kind of historically, Pokemon has always gone through this very awful development cycle. And I guess I'll break it down by generation. Because it's very much a case of... Um, like, every generation has an individual kind of reason for its crunch or a troubled development. Uh, and there, there are, like, a few standout things. Um, so, yeah. Also, feel free to ask me, like, opinions on individual people that have worked on the games, um, individual, you know, parts of the games, anything to do with Pokemon, and I'll try and drop some knowledge. Um... So, in terms of crunch, Gen 1 had a really, really bad development cycle. It got paused, effectively, at some point, uh, because Game Freak were running out of money. Um, and they got hired to work on, like, Yoshi on the NES, and they got contracted to do various work until they eventually finished Pokemon after, like, six years. And that's why those games are so, so messy. Um, generally, Gen 1 is, like, pretty fucking notable for being like heavy redesigned so many times gen 2 um notorious for its delay that uh means that the johto that we had took a very long time to make um where space world like the original kind of um with a bunch of old pokemon or a bunch of old um like an entirely different region got thrown out that's the first time that that's ever happened um gen 3 I remember Gen 3, we don't know too much about Gen 3's development, except for the fact that Masada was in the fucking hospital, and that was his first time directing, so you can imagine that it was, um, that kind of redefining Gen 3 after Pokemania started to die down was very difficult. Um, Gen 4, we've seen, like, 50 different prototypes for. That game is Omega Rush, and Diamond and Pearl are, like, the most unfinished games in the series, right up there with Gold and Silver. Um, we don't know too much about Black and White, but that seems to be pretty good. X and Y seem they seem to have like heavy compromised uh, for the like jump to 3D. Sun and Moon seems pretty good, but it was also kind of rushed. Um, you can see this with like very big blank spots uh, where like the Alola Photo Club would be like Ultra Sun and Moon would fill in the gaps. Um, and then you know also they had to push for 20th anniversary. Uh, a second Kalos game got cancelled, um, and then Gen 8 kind of speaks for itself really. It, Gen 8 still isn't as rushed as Gen 2 or Gen 4 because nothing seems, like, missing. It's just very, like, subpar in a lot of areas. Um, if you have any other questions about any individual games, then uh, feel free. But I hope that answers your, uh, your question. So, it's kind of expected, like, these days, Game Freak doesn't have a positive reputation. Um, in terms of crunch, I mean, Game Freak... <laughs> I feel like their reputation was fine until, like, Let's Go. Like, Let's Go is when people started questioning things, and that's really weird to me because Let's Go is easily one of the most competently, um, like, staffed games. It's so... It's such, like, a marvelous, like, final product with... It's very safe, but also it has... I don't know. Let's Go is really interesting, but... You know, I wouldn't say that they're seen as, like, generally incompetent up until very then. Like, their reputation has not been soured by Let's Go, which is a game that was not meant for hardcore Pokemon fans, and Sword and Shield, which was just kind of passable for most people. Do I think Toby Fox helped Game Freak besides music? No. I mean, he might have helped on tracks that weren't his. I'm not really the expert for music, I will say that. But I can say that I mean, I don't think that he really, you know, his his influence is not obvious if it is there in terms of music, but definitely not for game design. Mm, excuse me. If anything, he was he probably did more for Little Town Hero, uh, in like any regard, way more than Sword and Shield. 
I'm curious while I know Game Freak usually works in the games, is there any stories of some people like me and Moto having his hand in Pokemon games? Um, well, I mean, the thing with Sticker Star, <clears throat> excuse me, is that Pokemon is, like, very, very distant from Nintendo's kind of watchful eye. Um, and that's a good thing and a bad thing, because most of Nintendo's good stuff, I think, comes from their R&D, and less so, um, their, like, business decisions. But, I mean, Miyamoto, I'm pretty sure he was the one that said, oh, like, dual ped versions would be a really good idea, back in uh, Red and Green. Do I know any specific struggles Game Freak ran into with HD development or 3D development X and Y? Well, I mean, they, they had to get, like, a shitload of staff for X and Y, so I guess that was an issue. Uh, X and Y, I think it has, like, the same amount of people working on it as Sword and Shield did. It was a massive production, um, because it was such a jump. I also think that so no, yeah, X and Y, um, was really the first time that they had to compromise, uh, their game design, and... You know, those games are fine. Um, I think every Pokemon game is still pretty good. But relatively, like compared to everything else, it's... I mean, it, it's pretty obvious. It's a very safe game um, for that reason, I guess. So if you see that as a struggle, then uh, fair enough. With Sword and Shield, I mean, I think it's plainly obvious. The staff allocation is really, really bad. Um, generally, it's... The, from prototype builds, the story, it's not fully documented yet, so I can't say too much, but the story seems to have been different, uh, just over a year before release, which is weird because a lot of those elements would have been, uh, in previous games, like, have been very deeply, like, slotted in at that point, unless they're talking about gold and silver, which was, like, very, very, you know, Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Golden Silver was a while ago, so it's, it, I, like, kind of lost my train of thought there, but Golden Silver, you get what I'm saying. You know, that was a while ago. I don't think that is, like, really relevant now. I mean, a lot of Game Freak staff have, uh, stuck around, which is quite funny. I know this is probably obvious, but how long was the main art designer, James Turner, employed? Like, how long did he work in the game? Well, James Turner, uh, I think he's been with the series... He started with the Gale of Darkness, but he was with the series since 2010, I think. Like, the main series, 2010. Yeah, he officially designed a Pokemon in 2010, not counting Shadow Lugia. Um, but in terms of Sword and Shield, I'd imagine since he was the art director, um, it was like he had been on this project for three years, because Sword and Shield had three years of development. Game Freak based the regions in real places. Do they travel to those places for inspiration? Yes. Um, Masada went... To, I think, obviously, the first, the biggest one. So, Unova, Masada went to... I think he went to, like, Broadway. And he was really inspired to create uh, Unova in a very particular way. Um, and I don't... I think what's funny is that... Uh, I think his Broadway show got cancelled. But, like, that motivated him even more to, like, fully realize what Unova was. Um, and he's been to France. I don't know so much about Hawaii, but I know that him and Omori... I'm pretty certain that him and Omori took a trip to the UK right around the time Sun and Moon uh, came out. So, basically, uh, go and stalk what they were doing on Instagram over a year ago to find out what they're doing on Gen 9. That was a joke, by the way. Don't, don't do that. That's weird. Uh... But yeah, the anime staff did that. They, I think famously, like, the, the big example was Alamos for the Rise of Darkrai movie. That was where they, like, really, um, like, went all out with that. And it, I think, the like, production-wise, I'm not as knowledgeable about the anime uh, as other people. But I, I, I think that production-wise, uh, Rise of Darkrai and Pokemon Heroes are two of my, like, big favorites uh, in terms of, like, the aesthetic, so... Do you feel staff at Game Freak has a low morale after the two Switch games getting polar responses? I mean, not really, because they're still working on stuff. Like, I can't really speak because I've only ever heard positive things. I think Game Freak, from what I know, is a very easy um, company to work for in that they have really good initiatives. I sound like such a shill when I say that, but, you know, uh, so like Corona, for example... 
they have a really good like working from home kind of thing going on. So Corona didn't really impact them. Um, and let's see. Also, the gear project just makes it feel like every individual person has a chance to be heard. Um, new people like Miku Yoshida, she was put into like a lead role in like a big role for a certain part of Let's Go. And what's really fascinating about that is that she had just graduated. Um, so like Game Freak are very good at fostering new talent. So I don't think they'd really care because a lot of people like come and go. Um, and a lot of people that joined with Let's Go and Sword and Shield, um, I don't think they'd really feel too bad about it because, you know, they would be their first project. Obviously, I can't speak for every individual person. Um, and the old people, you know, the old heads have been doing it for quite a while. So I don't think anything can really phase, uh, like, industry professionals like Nishino, um, Masada, even, like, some of the slightly newer staff from Gen 3, like Omori. Wasn't there an article about low morale a while ago? Uh, no, I I mean, maybe. If you have, like, a link to that, that would be uh, really interesting. But I don't know anything about that so far, so <laughs> who knows? I, I haven't heard anything. Sorry, I have some fucking moron responding to me on Twitter. Oh, Nintendo Soup, this is going to be fun. Hold on, let me uh, let me type out this response. Somebody was getting mad because they like... Hold on. Yeah, so like on my Sword and Shield tweet, I was like... Obviously someone was like, let's be real here. I suspect James Turner was also involved in this mess. Wasn't there footage about him designing a route or city for Sword and Shield? And then they showed, they tweeted a video of him going over Motorstoke in like 3DS Max. And then I, I, it's like, what the fuck does that mean? He was just showing something to fucking Game Informer. He knows how to use 3DS Max. It's almost as if he's been in this industry for fucking 20 years. Jesus Christ. Uh, let's see. During the 277th episode of Waypoint Radio, Waypoint's Austin Walker made a very interesting claim about what's going on at Game Freak. Okay, so this is... Who the fuck is Austin Walker? He works at Vice. Oh shit, this guy's fucking followers. I don't know shit about him, though. It's from a podcast. Let me listen to this. Tech reimagined oh, Christ. This is a two and a half hour long podcast. I actually have. And there's no, like, timestamps to for this thing at all. If somebody could find that, that would be amazing. He... He told the audience that the morale of Game Freak employees at an all-time low that he didn't elaborate the reason why. Yeah, this is like fucking nin soup. This is like a fucking 50-word article. I wouldn't... Like, it wouldn't be surprising. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not saying it's out of the question, but I, I have no idea who the fuck, like, any... Like, what any of this shit is. <laughs> Do I think they will hire more foreign staff? Uh, foreign as in not Japanese is what I assume, but... Uh, I mean, they, they're constantly hiring new people. Um, like, you can... I don't really know because I don't check who is hired in, like, every um, part of the game between releases. Again, this is a very recent thing. Um, but, I don't know. They, they, they hire new people all the time, so it's very possible. Like, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of, I would say... Uh, like Gen 5 era and onwards, they started hiring a lot of um, Western people. You know, they had already either worked on the series at some point 
Um, there's there's definitely like Western influence in Game Freak though. It has it's been like that since around that time I would say, when they needed to expand. I think X and Y has something to do with that. Just like the big, uh, like a bulk of people. It would make a lot of sense. Do you think after Backlash, Game Freak or TPC are going to rethink on how long they should spend on a Pokemon game? No. I think the series is too big for them to do that. I think that there are so many moving parts that it is very difficult to delay something like Pokemon. Um, yeah, I think that there are, like, you know, people are like, oh, you know, the games need to match the anime, and they really don't. Um, most infamously, when Pokemon was at its literal biggest, uh, there were... You know, Johto got delayed by a year, and they had to do the Orange Islands. Like, the anime is compromised um, for this sort of thing before. But, you know, it's it's very... I don't think it's ever really been the other way around. It's it's weird. Pokemon as a, as a series is just too big to stop doing yearly releases. And I wish uh, they changed their tune on that. I guess them outsourcing like, whole projects to other studios like um, BDSP is a step in the right direction, but obviously the results of that have yet to be seen. Has Game Freak commented about the leaks that happened a while ago? So the only two... Uh, they haven't commented. Uh, I assume by the leaks, you mean the prototype stuff, right? Like the Wacko um, leak with, like, Space World and Diamond and Pearl and Red and Green and Sword and Shield, Let's Go, etc. Yeah, so... From what we know, uh, the only two times they've, we, we, they've like, I don't think they've commented about them, but they've acknowledged them, like, officially twice. Um, one time was, I think, James Turner. Somebody sent uh, the prototype stuff to James Turner. Like, they sent, I think, Kotoro. Um, like just some of the new Pokemon when the first gold and silver leak happened about almost three years ago at this point. And he, his like general thing was like, people asked him like, Oh, have you seen this before? And he was like, no, I've never seen any of these before. Um, and then the other time was when game was when they announced Surfetch. And I think it was game informer that did a, that did an interview with Omori and I think Masada, or it might've been Omori and a while, probably Omori and Masada. Cause it was around the time that, um, Sword and Shield were coming out, uh, obviously, with Surfetch. And they, they were like, oh, you know, there was like a cut evolution that had been uh, found in early builds of Gold and Silver. And I think it was just... I, I think they just got like kind of a, you know... it was They got like a non-answer. They were like, oh, did this like inspire Surfetch? And I think their answer was like, oh, Surfetch is like this really cool new design that we're working on. So I don't think they acknowledged it, but they had to have like... You know, they definitely know about it, for sure. Masada signing the drawing of the Leak the Lola starters is so fucking good. I really want to know more about that. I really, really, really want to know more about that. Yeah, so I you can probably find uh, the source on Reddit. It's at, like at the bottom of the fucking Pokemon conspiracy iceberg, um, which is where I first heard about it. So it was very recent. But when Sun and Moon were coming out, obviously the designs of the final evolutions of the starters leaked. I think they, it was at Worlds, correct me if I'm wrong, but some kid, like some guy took, um, I think like it was either official art or like the leaked art or like fan art that his friend drew. And he like brought them up to Masada to sign it, and he, he was like, these aren't supposed to be out, but he, like, signed them. He was cool about it. He was like, huh, we haven't released these yet. <laughs> how, how do you know what these things are? But yeah, that's uh, pretty fucking crazy, just in general. Masada has blamed a lot for what's been happening in Game Freak usually, but has he actually been working on the games. I hear he doesn't really work on it much anymore. Well, he's, I guess, like, assistant director on Diamond and Pearl. That's what I'm... Or BDSP, that's what I'm calling him for now. He's also, like, the overall producer of the series. So he does oversee a lot of what happens, and he probably makes a lot of big, um... 
decisions as far as like the series goes, but I don't, but he doesn't really have as much like direct impact on um, games as much as he used to. So his last uh, like major contribution was uh, he did music for the Crown Tundra. Uh, and we are like 100% sure that he did the theme for Calyrex and the Steeds. It's very like reminiscent of his work on Gen 5 to me. Like it sounds, you know, almost like a modern interpretation of the Kabbalion Tarakian Verizian theme. And aside from that, um, he's been doing a lot of work on Pokemon Go music wise. He, he jumps about a lot between stuff. But his, like, musically, it's been Pokemon Go and um, Sword and Shield at the very end. He didn't do any other music for Sword and Shield. And also, um, he's kind of just, like, the face of the series, even though he, he's not even, like, the series director anymore. So it's... It, it, he's kind of in, like, a really shitty position. <laughs> um, he did direct Let's Go, but Let's, Let's Go was weird. He directed it and made a lot of, like, the big decisions for that game, I guess. It's probably the most, like, recent big contribution. Um, so, yeah. He still works on Pokemon a lot. But uh, in terms of, like, he has, like, far less of an impact nowadays than he has ever done. I mean, like, even now he's still directing, um, you know, BDSP with someone from Ilka. I've heard a lot of people saying that Sony feels like it started on the 3DS, hypothesizing that it started development on the 3DS before switching to Switch. No, that's absolutely untrue. So obviously, it still uses assets from the 3DS. It still uses uh, the 3DS games as a base, but that's as much, uh, you know, Pokemon is, uh, ever since X and Y, it's been built on the same kind of thing. It's like saying that Ultra Sun and Moon used X and Y as a base. Like, yeah, that's true. Um, it's still using the same 3D uh, kind of engine, quote-unquote. Um, like the, kind of the, you know, what they've learned from that point. Um, like there are assets in the prototype for the very first, so the very first prototype for Sword and Shield that, uh, has been released is dated December of 2017. So that would have been just when it had finished pre-production and it's mostly got a lot of let's go stuff. So it initially, it has always been a switch game. It always started out as a switch game. Um, but it's mostly let's, you know, like, let's go obviously started way before Sword and Shield. Oh, well, not before. No, I would say let's go started around the... It's hard to, it's hard to explain. Sword and Shield's earliest, um, like, dated build that we have, and it's very, very early. It's like build 56, I think, technically. Um, it was December of 2017, so it was absolutely, positively a Switch game. Though it didn't, it did not ever start out as a 3DS game uh, in engine. It does have stuff like code. Uh, it has like very like broken mystery gift shit in that build in particular. But the build after that, it was immediately erased. Like the only 3DS related stuff in even the prototypes is mostly leftover stuff from Game Freak's earlier work on Let's Go. What the fuck? Hold on. Sorry, Twitch uh, bugged out. There's been something eating me. Are the Pokemon Home Rend is using the Gen 7 or 8 models of the Pokemon for posing. Um, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> they, they are very ugly looking. I will say that. But I, I said that in my Pokemon Home video. Do you see those? The ransomware ones. Capcom. Ref the, what ransomware? What? Ransomware what? I have no idea uh, what ransomware you're referring to. Capcom, ref I assume you reference the Can You Pet the Dog account. And I assume you mean Naughty Dog. Wait, side of The Last of Us. More LGBT representation. I mean, yeah, I mean, Pokemon as a series has so many people working on it. It will always be at least somewhat influenced. Like, you'll obviously, like, you know, you'll have, like, yeah, of course, like, in, in every aspect, because art is just naturally like that. Um, I think that, I mean, the biggest, uh, you know, thing that most people probably think of 
is the region design, like France, um, America, you know, Hawaii, uh, Great Britain. Like they've always been um, kind of pulling like big things from Pokemon. And obviously, I think ever since like even Gen 1, there are Pokemon that uh, date back to like, you know, things that aren't just based off of like things strictly like creatures or themes strictly in Japan. Um, and obviously there are like musical things that are probably based on Western stuff. Um, there are artists, there are people that work on Pokemon that are Western, um, or that are Western, you know, like fluent in like English and stuff like that. So obviously, yeah, I think it's like one, of, it's pretty much always been like that. Uh, for Pokemon Legends, do you think it's going to cause a massive change in the series or, or like a one-shot with a change in the formula? I think it is going to be entirely success-dependent. I can't say for certain, but what I do think is happening is that it's very likely that we get a Persona situation if it is vastly preferred and vastly more accessible than the main series, but I don't see that happening. I think we just have to wait until it comes out. I think there's no way to uh, to see Legends could be a side series, but given uh, the premise of Legends, I don't know if I would want to see that happen. Um, like, it's cool and all, but I think that Pokemon moving away from something traditional and having two separate series... I would rather the series kind of go in, like, one direction. Um, like a far more confident kind of product, as opposed to splitting into two things, because the last thing that we need is two full Pokemon series. <laughs> Speaking of Legends, how far in development is it right now? It still looked like an alpha in the trailers. So from what uh, has been talked about online, the trailer and the footage that we saw was from December of 2020. Um, and if it's coming out in 2022, and it's a mostly Team B game, because I assume Team A is working on Gen 9, that is pretty much like 100% confirmed. It's always been like this. Um, you know, like... Right when Black and White came out in 2010, they started working on X and Y, uh, and, you know, so on. So I assume, you know, despite having uh, Omega Ruby and Black and White 2 being worked on as well in that period. But I think that um, generally, we will see... Uh, I don't know. I mean, Let's Go or Legends Arceus probably being worked on since late 2019. So it's had like about a year of pre-production and it, you know, like a very early in-game kind of stuff. Basically the same story as every other Pokemon game, I think. Do you think Legends will get a new trailer during Nintendo's E3 Direct? Uh, yeah, I think they'll both get new trailers. They're coming out very, very close to each other. And they seem to be doing entirely different things. Yeah, I mean, maybe for us, but uh, in terms of COVID, you know, kind of causing a weird rift. But as I as I said earlier, I think COVID didn't really impact Game Freak that much. I mean, I would not be surprised if it if Gen Nine came out uh, at the end of twenty twenty two, but I would be very disappointed. I, I mean, I'll be disappointed if that's the case, but I won't be surprised. Because, like, they, they always need a holiday game. Unless they are going to, like, rope, like, Team B into immediately doing, like, Let's Go Johto in, like, under a year. Which I don't see happening. Or they do DLC for Legends Arceus. Which is, like, the ideal um, thing for 2022's later half. Um, that would be, like, pretty good, I would think. Or DLC for BDSP. Uh, who knows, really. We're in, like, such an exciting era for Pokemon. I think that, um, nobody, you know, really asked this, but I think it's really fascinating how, you know, we can complain so much about the series, like, more than people have ever done before. Um, maybe it's died down just a little bit because of Dexit. But I think that generally, there are, um, like, this is easily the best period for Pokemon as a fan in terms of how much is coming out and how interesting it is, especially to look at it from a production point of view. How do I feel about the people that ask for a game with every region? I feel like they have never made a game and they will never make a game and they don't understand how making a game works. They don't understand how pacing works or difficulty. Um, yeah, those people are probably just children. 
And I can guarantee you that they would stop at Hoenn, okay? They would stop playing a Pokemon game at Hoenn. Like, they, they would just not get past a uh, fourth region. As, like, maybe if they do, like, a best of kind of thing. But th that would be a very, very strange experience. Uh, I kind of feel like if they don't delay Legends to late 2022, then we'll get DLC for Legends and the holiday will sell a full version. Yeah, maybe. No, that could absolutely be the case. Or maybe... Hmm... I think for 2022, if they do that, we could see like maybe DLC for both games and then like a like a full Sinnoh bundle pack for Christmas. I think that would be really smart for them to do. It will give uh, Team A way more time on, uh, you know, Gen 9. God, if Gen 9 comes out next year, holy shit. Honestly, if Gen 9 gets, like, four years of development, I will be over the fucking moon. Holy shit. Uh, let's see. California region, when? Never. Taxes are too fucking high. Yeah, exactly. I feel like revisiting individual regions... It's probably just better for the series. It's probably just healthier. I like Kanto more because of Let's Go. I like Jodo more because of Heart Gold. You know, I like Kanto more because of Heart Gold. And I like Unova more because of Black and White too. And I feel like Legend of Arceus is going to do the same thing here. I'd rather they wouldn't just shove all of the shit into one region for the sake of it. Overall, the style of the Space World League. Honestly, I, I think a Pokemon like highlights would be really interesting, but I, I have no idea how they how they would do that. I'd rather they would just release like a fucking collection at that point. Did they actually say it takes a month to recreate the Pokemon? Did they just transition models that they claim? Otherwise, anyway, I have no idea what you're referring to. Hey, good night, Azaria. Peace out. Do you feel a Legends Unova would take place during the Civil Unovan War? I have no fucking idea what that means. I'm not that much of a nerd. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think I'll, I'll get into my, my thoughts, uh, on Legends when more comes out, but I will say this, and I've said this in the script, so I'm kind of spoiling my video, but... Uh, it's going to be very fucking hard to do Legends for games that we have already seen the conflict of where legendary Pokemon are involved, right? Like, if you would do... I think Gen 5 can get away with it with Legends of, like, you know, the original Dragon and shit, but who knows. But even... The, I don't know. Like, the whole, the whole issue with Legends is that you run the risk of demystifying part of your lore and I think it's fine for something like X and Y, like if they were to do the, like the Kalos War. I think that would be perfect um, for like a, a past conflict to look at. But I think that they really run the risk of like demystifying Gen 5's like very well thought out um, kind of backstory for Reshiram and Zekrom and Kyurem. Like I don't want to see the original dragon very plainly. I think it would be super fucking lame. Maybe like silhouette at best. Uh, sorry, hold on, let me... So what was the actual reason for Dexit? Um, it's obviously, you know, there's probably a reason. Probably a multitude of reasons. Uh, I can't say I know that, genuinely. Um, the game, it's weird because May of 2018 was the last time that we saw Sword and Shield before it's, uh, before a trailer in February of 2019, which was likely using footage from December of 2020. So... Something drastically terrible had to have gone wrong in those six months. Because everything was fucking on par. Like, everything was... Aside from maybe, like, uh, visuals, like textures, everything was looking, like, pretty by the numbers um, for Pokemon's development. 
But who, like, who the fuck knows? Something big must have happened, though. Maybe, you know, we might see the effects of it uh, in on Legends. You know, maybe they split off a bunch of Team A. Uh, they, maybe, when well, let's go... My, like, one possible theory is that they took a bunch of... Because half of Sword and Shield's team was Let's Go. And lots of Let's Go's team, I guess, like, jumped ship to Sword and Shield. And also a lot of Let's Go's team uh, built architecture for use on Sword and Shield. So... You know, maybe a, a group of those jumped onto that, and then a lot of the people that were supposed to work on Sword and Shield jumped ship uh, to work on Legends Arceus, which then like compromised Sword and Shield in some way. It could it could be a lot of things. I really don't know. It's genuinely like the biggest fucking Pandora's box of this whole series. Twilight Wings art director Okachiki to do card illustrations. Uh, somebody asked a, quest a question about creatures, and I think I skipped over it. Oh, probably, yeah, sorry, at the bottom. A dumb question, but what does creatures do? I mean, creatures has been, like, absorbed by, um, Game Freak very recently, I think. Like, fully absorbed. But for a while, they did, like, the models for Pokemon, um, for, like, 3D Pokemon. They had always been, like, affiliated with the Pokemon company. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, creatures... Uh, hold on. Creatures were... Oh, no, they acquired Umbrella, um, who made a bunch of Pokemon spinoffs. Do you feel Dexit will still exist in Gen 9? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I mean, I don't see... I don't know any reason as to why it should... But I, I feel like it might be like a fucking like sunk cost fallacy at this point. Like they're so invested in the idea that like there was a reason behind it that they would continue to do it. I think like that is just very like I think Game Freak's PR has been so poorly managed. Very, very poorly managed. Uh, I mean, I would love for it to not be, obviously. Did Game Freak really say anything about the models in general? They said that, um, wait, hold on. Like, I remember people saying the Game Freak said the Pokemon took a month to month. Okay, that's, I don't know who said that to you, but that's not true. They definitely didn't spend a month per model. There's 800 of them. There's like a thousand of them now. What's this R rumor? Pokemon Sword and Shield could be getting third DLC expansion. What the fuck is this article? Okay, it was literally just a random fucking text post on VP. Good job, guys. Literally just like a fucking text post. God damn, actual fucking slow news day. Uh but yeah, I to answer your question, Game Freak did say that they had to remake the models, which I, I really think was like a fucking poor translation. Like, something had to have gone wrong when they were, like, putting that into English because they did not remake the models. All of the textures in Sword and Shield and Let's Go are new. They had to make new textures for every Pokemon. To my knowledge, uh, every Pokemon. Maybe some very, like, simple designs like Gengar um, weren't difficult, but I, I haven't looked too much into that. But most, if not all, Pokemon have new textures. And there are new animations for new for every Pokemon. Yeah, I mean it's it's like a weird no man's sky situation, I guess. I like maybe. I it, it gives me that feeling. I always thought home was made by Game Freak until the announcement of BDSP that home was made by Ilka. Well, hold on. So Pokemon Home, uh, is it like a 
Do we have the staff list? We we have to have the staff list. Are they like fully uncredited? Oh my god. Hold on. No, we don't have staff for Pokemon Home, I don't think. But like, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. Like, there was obviously very close collaboration with the Game Freak, much like Bank. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some Game Freak names on there. Some very like, you know, kind of like low, uh, not low ranking. That sounds fucking mean, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I don't know if Sword and Shield's getting a third DLC. It would be cool, but who knows. I feel like they would have announced that with the first expansion pass. Time was the was why Dex had happened, but they had to make it sound good. An article for Polygon. Hold on. Uh, what in this article are you referring to? All right, what would be the quickest amount of time you think an actual Pokemon could be created in? Or Mori, it, d it definitely takes a decent amount of time. I'd say the fastest for coming up with an idea and, actual and actually implementing it completely in the game would be at least three months per character. So obviously they don't spend three months on one Pokemon and then move on to the next one. He's obviously talking in like tandem with other Pokemon. Um, that being said, though, a lot of that time would be during pre-production while while they're like designing the Pokemon, I can't imagine that modeling the Pokemon and animating it would, um, you know, take up like all of that time. That that doesn't really have anything to do with Dexit. Like this, you know, he talks a lot about, um, you know, it. Pokemon working in parallel. Obviously, they don't design individual Pokemon. They design them as part of a set. And then they, you know, shave down a bunch and then they redefine them. And then they put them into the game. But that's alongside everything that's being uh, currently worked on. I will say that in the earliest build of Sword and Shield, there are no new Pokemon. In fact, there are no new Pokemon uh, for like... Six or seven months, at least. And... What's interesting is that if you look at the... Oh my god, that's the wrong trailer. So if you look at the announcement trailer for Sword and Shield, there are also no new Pokemon in uh, that footage. Which is interesting, right? No new Pokemon in Sword and Shield whatsoever. Um, and this would have been recorded with, within various builds uh, a few months before release. Or before the release of the trailer. So, you know, because they introduced the starters through CGI. It wasn't through, like, in-game. Which I think, um, I don't know if that was the case with Sun and Moon. I don't remember. I don't really care. It's not relevant, but. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, there were no new Pokemon implemented until at least 2019. So that's like a whole year of them trying to get the engine to work. Which, and then like a year of pre-production. So, you know... Don't know if you've played, but, ha but if you have, how did you like Little Town Hero? So yeah, I got a review copy for Little Town Hero um, before the game came out. It was my first time like ever doing that. Um, so I made a video on it uh, on release. And you can go watch that on my YouTube channel. I think I sound like I'm on horse tranquilizers um, back then. But I still stand by everything that I said. It it's fine. 
is Team ALB working on Legends or, or is it like a group effort? I mean, Pokemon is always a group effort. You'll always have people, you know, jumping in and out. Uh, generally, when I say Team A, I mean like Team A are like, Team A is where a game is predominantly the bigger game of that generation, the biggest game of that generation. It has the most amount of time on it. Uh, usually a new generation game like X and Y, Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, and it has a lot of the older faces on it. Um with some newer faces helping out in more minor roles. Uh, team B is generally where the roles are completely reversed, where maybe a director like Masada will be helping out, um, or like, say, Omori back in Omega Ruby. Um, but, like, the rest of the team are generally new. Uh, obviously, depending on what their job is, that can vary. So you'll have people from, quote-unquote, Team A. Like, music, is t like, music isn't really uh, applied here. Like, you'll have people like um, Ichinose, um, or, like, shit, you'll have people like Kageyama, who has who works on, like, 20 different fucking freelance things at once, but he'll still find time to do the whole soundtrack for BDSP, you know? But uh, to answer your questions, it'll always be a group effort, but I think that it will mostly be Team B, which is really interesting. We have to wait and see who the director is, though. I think. Do you think if Sword and Shield had any lower poly models to the Pokemon, lower poly versions of each Pokemon, though I don't know what they were actually used for? Um, wait, where were the LODs for Sun and Moon? Have you got like an example? Oh, yeah, no, because the, the LODs were for strictly overworld Pokemon, right? Yeah, I think people complaining about the existence of Little Town here are fucking stupid. I said this when the there was doom and gloom about it. Um, when it got announced. And like, oh my god, it's compromising Sword and Shield. It's like Uh, okay, well, can't wait until the game comes out and it's got a, it's credited by like with like twenty people. Good job, guys. You really uh ruined Sword and Shield's development with your small indie team. That also worked on Sword and Shield in, like, less big area. It's like, you know, no offense to the... Like, hold on. Like, no offense to, um... Oh, my God. I hate Google. Will Town Hero credits. This does not fucking help me at all. Thank you for telling me that it was made by Game Freak. But yeah, either way, we've had, you know... Like, Harmonite came out in the same year as fucking Black and White 2, I think. Which are the most beloved games in the series at this point. Like, currently. So, you know, clearly, that doesn't fucking matter. And also, Masada was, like, working on that. And also directing X and Y. And also making music for X and Y. Like, it, you know, it's it's very, like, open and versatile, especially with gear projects. Instead of Gen 9, do you think they could make making a, a Gen 8 too? Possibly. I think, again, it would be any... You know, I say I constantly say this, and I really wish that Gen 4 got this treatment. Holy shit. Um, but, as like, the longer they spend on games before, an, uh, before another generation, the better. So I would like to see a Sword and Shield 2 over a Gen 9. Do you think Legends will have less significant pop-ins since overworld Pokemon have been implemented since the start? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's going to be an improvement over Sword and Shield technically. That's just how things work. With a name like Game... I mean, Game Freak... I mean, if you want to trace back to the name, go back to, like, the late 1980s when they were making, you know, manga and comic books. Tembo definitely compromised Sun and Moon. No, it didn't. <laughs> it did not. There were some shots in the Legends trailer. I mean, yeah, with, with how the gameplay is, I mean, uh, of course. I think that uh, they're going to implement LOD in terms of how the Pokemon are animated. You saw that in the in the trailer. Like, Chingling from far away was looking a bit scuffed. But up close, there's a part later on in the trailer where it looks perfectly fine. 
No, Sword and Shield didn't have overworld Pokemon from the start. They implemented it specifically after seeing how much people liked it in Let's Go. I honestly thought more people were going to talk to me about uh, like route design and whatnot. Because, well, you know, because of my uh, very recent tweet. <laughs> God, early red and green is so fucking funny. Very early red and green is funny. Because from what we can gather, and from discussions that I've had with people, um, the original route designers in red and green both left, like, after, uh, like, all the Yoshi shit. So, red, Gen 1 is basically all Nishino, and then a few particular areas uh, in yellow that are different um, were done by someone else. So, like, what's funny is that we can get Nishino's traits so, so, like, nailed down from the 90s. It's incredible. Like, Nishino um, and Omori are the two route designers that I think I can, like, immediately recognize on a project. What makes a route design good, in my opinion? So that's a very, like, complex kind of question because it, um... It depends on what, like, type of game we're talking about. So if we're talking, say, uh, like, 2D. Let's just, let's just say 2D uh, for the sake of things. I think it needs to be staggered in a sense. I think it needs to have... Um, it needs to look not blocky. And Pokemon was really bad at this for a long time. Uh, Gen 3, I think, was the first time where we really saw, like, uh, routes with, like, staggered kind of tiles. Um, but at the same time, it's very hard to do that because you run the risk of making it really hard to navigate or really finicky. Um, I think Gen 4 kind of goes overboard with that, and maybe Gen 5. Um, generally, though, I can, like, point to good routes uh, as good route design, but generally, there are, like, um, very, like, scattershot grass placement. I think Omori like, early on in his career, was really good at that. Um, good use of HMs and backtracking. Good, so, you know, you go to the route, you can visit it at multiple points, and the context of it changes, uh, generally. Uh, let's see. Um, like, good use of overworld mechanics in general. I think HMs aren't the only thing limited, limited to that, like, the bike has been used, um, in interesting ways before. I think... Let's see... Yeah, I mean, it not being fucking awful to navigate and not being a straight line. Like, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but designing a Pokemon route isn't particularly um, difficult in terms of how. So, like, if we look at... Let me show you an example of a route that I designed. Um, and not to say that I'm better than Game Freak, obviously. But if we look at this, so you guys will remember the bottom right route in Kanto, which was like Route 13, I think. Yeah, holy shit, this route was just awful in uh, the vanilla game. But see, this is like my redesign on it. And obviously I'm like using very, very limited tiles, nothing custom here. Um, and I think it's really easy to, like, reinterpret existing routes, but designing new ones is, is difficult. It's, it's hard. Um, but yeah, route design is, you know, it's weird. Like, you have to have a good balance of, like, trainer placement as well. Um, and also, like, it's placement in the region. Like, this route is a perfect example. Because Kanto, like, the level design is... is is like in a way that you can approach this from two ways. So I needed to make it um, interesting from both angles, from both uh, Route 12 and 14. So it's, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to think about. 
and it varies depending on how each region is structured. Uh, in terms of which generation is the best route design to me, I think five easily. Um, there are obviously great route designs in every generation, I think. I think there isn't a generation that, and I mean, I can pick and choose if you, you know, ask me a generation to look at, but I think black and white and black and white too um, really benefit from being this super focused kind of linear level with amazing route design. You know, it, there's a point A to point B and they can do whatever they want um, in that kind of place. The grass moving is something I don't know how to feel. Um, well, I mean, the Pokemon there are different. Obviously, like, again, the context of this route is very different. God, people that are like, sorry, I just got a Twitter reply. If we want better games, we must not buy the Diamond and Pearl remakes. Like, what the fuck do you think your sale is going to have on how Omori dictates staff on main series Pokemon? Get over yourself, dude. Like, holy shit. Like, you are not that important, dog. Like, voting with your wallet will not change something like this. All right, hold on. Let me uh, let me uh, get rid of that. Oh yeah, no fire. Red so for that project, which I'm not talking too much about, I'm only showing off like very brief uh, screenshots. I think route design is um, the big thing, but also like balance and placement is different. I don't, no, I, no, I, I think I'm going to ban anyone from talking to me about Gen 5 remakes. It doesn't matter where it is. YouTube comments, Twitch chat. No, 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 no. <laughs> it makes me so, like, scared. Actually just fucking instilling fear. How do I think that Pokemon should approach its route and area design going forward with the larger and more realized scale for the world, like in Sword and Shield and in Legends? Well, I think that, um, so there was this really interesting thing that I, I posted to Twitter, but some guy on 4chan, I don't know if they posted this anywhere else, uh, but I like re I like reshared it on Twitter. They made the first kind of part of Sword and Shield, like pre-wild area in gold and silver, uh, with like a general like GRC, like tile set and scaling. And you know what? If you, like, take Route 2 from that, it looks fucking phenomenal. Wait, I'll, I'll get the, uh, I'll get the picture. Hold on. Um. Um. Gen 2, Lu 2. Nope, it'll probably be Lu Tube. But it was really fascinating. Hmm. Yeah, I can't, I can't find it, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like the, the, it looks really good because it's structured like a very strong, like Jodo, uh, route. And I think I could say that about a lot of the things in Sword, or a lot of lo a lot of the routes in Sword and Shield. Excuse me, they're they're very good for two D, but they are just not equipped for three D at all. Um, and I think I, you might want to look towards you know maybe Dragon Quest um, in terms of like how areas are designed. It's it's very hard for me to because truthfully I don't think any you know series kind of has like a good reference point, which is why I think it's so hard. And I don't think the answer is making it Nintendo hire this man.
So, you know, it's, that's, I don't, I truthfully don't know. I think I would like them to go in uh, a direction where it's both. I think usually I prefer something that's far more confident, but at the same time, they have like some really good heads on their shoulders uh, when it comes to designing like very uh, safe kind of routes that would work in 2D. And I think it's just a perspective change that could really help with that. I don't think they need to, like, I think they should have open areas, but also some like windy uh, route design that they like, you know, are already pretty good at. Yeah, I don't know. I, I can't justify supporting the supporting BDSP. Sorry. Uh someone just found a platinum. <laughs> Do you think a gated open world experience would be smart? Or approach would be smart. Sorry, it's getting pretty late over here. Is in the area you can explore gets larger as you progress in the game. I mean I, I don't really know what you mean by that. You mean like you unlock, say, a new part of the region after you... I mean, I, I, hasn't Pokemon always been like that? Do you think Game Freak slash TPC... No, they will never release a collection. I genuinely think that they... they Unless this is like some distant part like in the future where it is like fucking you know, 2030, and there is no, every single 3DS has exploded, there's no reason for them to do that. They still make money off of Bank, they still make um, money off of the eShop on the 3DS. Uh, the most they will do is re-release Gen 1 and 2 and maybe 3. I don't see, like, there are so much value in Gen 4, and they would have to compete with themselves. Have I played Origami King? No, and I, I don't intend to, sorry. <laughs> um... I'm not interested in modern Paper Mario. <laughs> Cause there's no there's no gameplay there. Which sucks. It's unfortunate. Hmm. <sighs> Origami King is good. Um, it's post sticker star. I'm not willing to try it. The only time I can see them point Gen 3 7. Yeah, exactly. It's like when old systems get invalidated, they'll make new stuff. It's why they did that for Heart Gold. Heart Gold exists for that reason. Specifically to get Gen 2, you know, Pokemon in Gen 4. The current games at the time. And it's why BDSP uh, kind of worries me. But you guys have all seen the video on that. I don't feel like I need to say anything extra on those games. That I didn't address on the behind the scenes, which you can view on Patreon. Do you think the popularity of Sword and Shield's human characters will influence new games? Um, no, because, I mean, they've always been pretty good at design. I think their character design got really competent with Sun and Moon, and Sword and Shield is just kind of rolling with that. I also think the redesigns for Let's Go are phenomenal. I think, uh, with maybe the exception in, like, stylistic choices for, like, red, blue, and green, uh, I think their designs are really great. Like, they're my favorite designs. Uh, seeing those in, like, a more adult setting would be cool. Um, but, yeah, like, they've been really good at that so far, and they've also been doing a good job of outsourcing their character design to, like, freelance designers. Um, so I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon. I think it's just going to keep rolling as much as it has. When do I think the 3DS will be killed? Um, I don't know. N Nintendo fucking sucks. They're, they're, so unpredict they're so unpredictable. What's my greatest Pokemon hot take not counting development of fan base stuff? Uh, Let's Go is the best version of Kanto by far. Fire Red and Leaf Green are the worst uh, mainline Pokemon games. And... Colosseum and Gala Darkness kind of fucking suck. And Ultra Sun and Moon has the best story in the series. I think those are all my hot takes. And I don't think they're like particularly fucking egregious.
Yeah, I mean, if they remake the Arceus event in uh, BDSP, it's probably going to fucking suck. Because the Arceus event kind of fucking sucked to begin with. Yeah, I feel like they're pretty agreeable. Like, even if you, you don't personally agree with them, it's like, oh, I can see why you'd say that, you know. Also, I guess this is, like, maybe a hot take nowadays, but there isn't, like, a bad mainline Pokemon game. People love to shit on Red and Blue, um, but those are, like, like, name one Game Boy game that's as replayable as Pokemon Red and Blue. Like, as easy to go back to and as consistently fun as Red and Blue. That isn't called Gold and Silver, you know. So did Mizutani do all of the redesigns for Let's Go? Yeah, I, I, I really, really want to do videos on the Ori games, but I, I don't know. I just think they're so fucking bad. So did Mizutani, I can't, is it confirmed that she did the redesigns for Let's Go? Like, who is she credited as character designer? No, she didn't design Melton. There are only two character designers on Let's Go. Which uh, are for Pokemon, specifically. What do you find better in the Ultra game rather than the base one story-wise? That is a very complex opinion. And thankfully, for you guys, I have a video strictly for that, that I did on stream. And I will post that. Uh... Okay, there you go. That's my video on all of Pokemon stories. Removing, I mean, there's there's a lot of reasons why FRLG kind of fucking sucks. Yeah, I think uh, Pokemon Control is uh, a cool idea. I feel like they need to do that more. But it's very hard to do that without having a central Pokemon. Yeah, I'm not I'm not talking any story stuff today. I, I I blew my load on that one stream and I'll make videos about it in the future, but not right now. Okay, but was the character artwork drawn by her? Because she does TCG stuff. I don't know if that entirely confirms that she did the character designs. I'm not too familiar with how the TCG credits, though. You probably know more about it than, uh, than I do. Curious what you think of the Pokebot games? Um, I wouldn't support them making a third one, because from what I've played of both of them, they're really fucking boring. Like, but they're not really meant for me. They're meant for, like, really young kids. So I don't really care. <laughs> you know, I, I don't really have, like, a complex opinion on them. Do I think Game Freak is completely switched from doing third releases to just doing DLC? Perhaps. I mean, it depends on what they do with their main series from now on. I would sure love that to be the case, because fuck third versions. It would make a lot of sense for them to do that. Their development pipeline is so much easier now because of it. They don't have to fucking like get a whole staff list for these new games, you know? Although it does make my job harder as somebody who looks at the staff and 
you know, development behind these shit fests. <laughs> these super messy games. Bum, 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 bum. I'm really curious about something. There we go. I knew it was going to be on the fucking VP. Oh god, yeah, there's a fucking uh post on VP about my um my swoosh thing. Let's see, why is the DLC such a step up from the minigames map design? <laughs> it's deliberate. The problem with the OP is he assumes this is incompetence. It's not. They genuinely just don't give a fuck anymore. I don't know, man. I mean, the funny thing is, like, people are fine to say that. And I don't really care. I always like to look at things, you know, positively. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like if they didn't care, they wouldn't be working on the series. Omori doesn't get anything out of this, like, financially. Have you ever been called a shill or a hater from the same tweet before? Hundreds of times. <laughs> Someone said, explain this then, and link Tani. It's like, dude, he fucking... Worked on the DLC. What do you mean? Literally has DLC in parentheses. <laughs> Omori oh, really was a mistake. He should have stayed as a map boy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me look at our chat again. How do you feel about Legends not being split? Uh, good. Fuck pad versions. The... This is... This, like, it's the fucking Miyamoto meddling shit. But for Pokemon. It's just Pokemon's version of it. I swear. I think it'll be a time where people will be a lot more knowledgeable about on how Game Freak works on in the future. Well, it really depends, because, like... That's partly my job. You know, my channel is all about my opinions on Pokemon, but obviously that, um, as somebody that has, I guess, like a lot of knowledge on this sort of thing, like, um, my videos and discussions on the staff will naturally, um, kind of ring through. Uh, it's difficult to say. I want to say that I can have an impact on this. I know that, uh, there are like tons of other series that have had like big misconceptions, so I think one of my biggest inspirations as a content creator has definitely been, um, and the more I think about it, holy shit, this like visual for the stream is like super duper him. But um, Anime AJ, uh, I remember when Dragon Ball Super was coming out, um, a lot of the complaints were levied at like the animation and it was like, oh, it's low budget. Or, oh, you know, all the animators suck. All these new animators suck. And it's like, that wasn't the case at all. Um, but the wider community just didn't know that. So, um, with the help of him, I guess, and a lot of other, like, Sakuga heads, like, his channel in particular really kind of elevated that discussion across the whole fandom. And I, I really would love to have, like, a uh, similar impact for Pokemon and how that series is just created. But the thing with animation is that animators are very fast and loose with how they talk about their job. I know more behind the scenes stuff about the Pokemon anime than I do about the games. Um, strictly because Game Freak don't, you know, they don't, they're very secretive. A lot of the people that work at Game Freak have worked there for fucking ever. And there are like obviously super long NDAs that like, I remember, okay, so there was one person that I really, really was getting close to talking with. 
um, but they couldn't talk to me anymore because they they were a freelancer that had worked on previous games. Um, around like no, I want mm, no, you guys don't know who the fuck they are. Um, around like Gen Six, um, and they hadn't worked on Pokemon forever, and I was like, finally, you know, I can finally like talk talk to this person about the series because like the NDAs would have been up um, and shit like that, but. <laughs> uh, they, like, right when I was about to talk to them, they got contracted to work on Pokemon. I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. I think when Masada leaves, like, the series proper is when we're going to get, like, a lot of development history. Game Freak is more open about it than other companies, though. But, yeah, I have talked with, like, several animators um, on the series... And I know more about, like, the anime's production than I do the games, which is so crazy to me. Pokemon doesn't really keep its development hidden. They just choose to show it. And they show it more than other creators, like that Tajiri manga. You know, we found out about tons of fucking beta Pokemon. They just randomly drop Gorachu. It's less of a um, Game Freak secrecy thing, and it's more so it is a huge franchise that is handled by so many people and this goes for all aspects and not just how secretive they are by the game design and this isn't just the case for us as well you know james turner admitted to not knowing what the fuck the space world designs were despite the fact that they've gone back and reused designs from space world so you know wait what somebody in the thread said why did that shit block me on twitter i never even talked to him let me look at who i've blocked on twitter must be very, very few people, because I don't do it often. Blocked accounts. Okay, this guy posts in memes. The guy who owns Central Pokemon, I have that guy blocked. Yeah, I uh, I really don't have many people blocked. It's weird. Boom, 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 boom. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I think this is the same one that did that. Um, there was another thread about me, and somebody also said this exact thing. So. Probably just one guy. Does Creatures Inc. also work on the human models and animations? I don't remember off the top of my head, but probably. They, you can easily just check by looking at the credits. Base info from a Poketuber? Impossible. Who's Anon 2? Is that one of you guys? Don't fucking hijack the thread. <laughs> Holy shit. What are you guys doing? Also, somebody in the thread did point out uh, that I had mentioned that they pulled map designers from Monolith Soft. So recently I learned that Sword and Shield has organized its credits in a fucking awful way, where um, basically they like cha the like field map designers, I think. No, hold on. I wrote this down like earlier today. Because they've been pissing me off. And I talked to somebody that has worked on the games. Um, to confirm this. But for Sword and Shield specifically. Field planning. Equals like the level or route designers. Field map planning. Is the region layout designers. And field map design. Are the texture and environment artists. Which were all like monolith soft outsourced. So. You know. It's fucking just... God. Why so... Like, Sword and Shield... It's so messy. It's so messy. Like, that's the one word to describe it. Super duper messy. <laughs> yeah, it's very convoluted. Huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> fanfic general, and it's just a fucking smog on icon. Boom, 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 no, 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 boom, 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 boom. Monolith Soft made the N64 tree texture? Yes, 100%. Confirmed. What do you feel like Spiritomb's orbs would feel if you grab one? You know, like, I'm gonna start talking about Dragon Ball Z again. Uh, you know when, like, Goku, like, throw, like, throws a key blast? Like that. Kind of, like, squishy, but, like, only if you have the power to squish it, you know? I remember Joe talking about how Monolith people worked on the game. Yeah, uh, I brought that to his attention a while ago. Joe's cool. Omori just wasn't, I, I, oh, God, Omori. Omori is, like, the most... I'm definitely making a video solely dedicated to him, like, as a director. I just don't... It sucks, because he's such a nice guy. He, like... He's, he comes off as, like, so cool. And his job is, like, fucking difficult. But, like, shit, man. His... Like, level design was only okay at one point, and then his, like, directorial work has been so spotty. Think Porygon would feel weird? I don't know. Dude is, like, a duck. I would say, like, I can't, I don't know. All I will say that it's, like, I have massive respect for Omori. Um for his work on the series, but, like, I can't say that I like most of it, you know? <laughs> Holy shit, the fucking AJ parallels are really happening. Is Omori the fucking Yamamoro of Pokemon, dude? <laughs> Holy shit. He did phenomenal work on Sun and Moon. Mm. I don't know, those games weren't finished. Just like Omega Ruby and Sword and Shield, which weren't finished. No, not Yamamoto. Yamamoto is the plagiarist. That's the that's the guy who stole music for years and years and got away with it. You're thinking of Kenji Yamamoto. I'm thinking of Tadayoshi Yamamoto. Different people. How would you say Legends affected the production cycle for the games? I don't know until the game's out. I can't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, th that to me is, like, impossible. Wait, did I, hold on. Actually, I'll make a tweet about the monolith soft. Pretty easy for the composers. I don't know. 
My favorite thing is like when people say that shit about Pokemon music, because you have like Omega Ruby, which fucking just ruined um, Minako Adachi's life. Jesus Christ. They're like, oh, the game's already done. Why do they need to do uh, good music? Mm. And it's like, oh my god, the amount of fucking rearrangements she needed to do. You think the creation trio is going to be in the game? I have no fucking idea what's going on with that shit. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum. You know what song I have in my head? Barokai 3 opening. American audio? What the fuck is that? I don't like how that sounds in my head. God, what a fucking banger, dude. Oh, yeah. People, like, art is always gonna be, like, so fucking underappreciated. And I don't blame people, so. Boom. The unpaid interns. <laughs> what do you think Game Freak is? It's not a fucking sweatshop. No, um... It, I don't think Game Freak technically has many interns because... They already get like a lot of like early graduates from university. As like fully paid jobs. Bum ba ba bum. I'm gonna get copyright for fucking Kageyama, even though it's from a video game. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, I'm done with that. Sorry, I I had to get it out of my head. Yeah, Game Freak. I don't know. I. Honestly, this might sound stupid, especially if, like, clipped out of context, but I would rather Pokemon games, like, be a little less good, so long as they're, like, you know, manageable to work on. Because, like, the shit that they have to go through in fucking, like, and, like, game sometimes you can get the best, the fucking worst of both worlds, with, like, Gen 6, where the games are fucking just on par with what they need to be, but also, like, hugely compromised. You know, and the teams had to fuck it, the team had to make some sacrifices. I don't want incidents where Masada is in the fucking hospital, like he was in Ruby and Sapphire. It's like a really shitty, awful situation. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> also, the name of that thread on VP was uh, Omori is an even worse director than Masada. It's like, holy shit, do we not already know this? Like, I like Sun and Moon a lot, and I like, you know, Oras, and I like parts of Sword and Shield, but, like, is that really better than, like, the combined, like, 
Fire Red and Leaf Green, Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, Ruby and Sapphire, and X and Y. And Let's Go? I don't think so. I think across the board, Miyamoto, Masada has him fucking beat. I don't see yearly releases stopping anytime soon. In fact, we might go into double yearly releases, like pad releases in a year. Like one at the beginning, or middle, and one at the end, and I fucking hope not. Sword and Shield DLC is like a half release. Like, it still took a lot of effort, um, but it's way less intensive than the third version, where they had to, like, completely create a new project and, uh, you know, staff up and shit like that. We don't know to what extent, but, uh, you know, still way less than making a uh, full new game. I don't think the staff is overworked. I think it's a really weird situation where they're like okay with it, with the schedule. Um, I think Masada has gone on record saying like, oh, you know, that's nothing to worry about. I could be wrong though. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's clearly like at the detriment. Like they're clearly trying to work within it. And honestly, like it's all been like, God, like the new kind of blood um, has been really like good. I think the people to look out for are... I mean, Iwao isn't really new to the series. But, like... Iwao... Uh, Yoshida... Tani... And Nabana are, like, the big names that I'm looking at from Game Freak right now. Like, easily some of my favorite people at the company. In terms of just, like, their overall contributions. I'm a huge simp for Iwao, but we all know that. You think Game Freak is ever going to make a 2D game again? No. Um, well, not Pokemon, at least. Also, do you think Masada was a bad director? Also, no. I think Masada is pretty phenomenal as a director. Like, even if you don't like the games that came from that, um, you know, from his, like, directorial work, it's very much like, it's weird, right? Like his work as a director is, you know, maybe not your favorite. Maybe you don't like Black and White or Fire Red and Leaf Green. Like I don't like Fire Red and Leaf Green. I think Diamond and Pearl has a ton of fucking problems and same with X and Y um, and same with Let's Go. But I think like his way of fostering new talent is so important. And I think that he has like a real respect for, you know, kind of the old, you know, the, the people that came before him and the people that came after. I think Masada is so, so important to the series. And I think that people are so fucking harsh on him. And like, I'm not saying he's fucking immune to, you know, making dumb decisions or anything, but, you know. It's a weird one, for sure. You ever think... Oh, shit, no. I uh, didn't scroll down. Do you think they would benefit if they had a four-year work schedule? What do you mean? Like, it took them four years to work on a game? Or they released a new game every four years? Because those are very different. Just to clarify... Do 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 do
Most modern games take three years to develop. Yeah, so does Pokemon. <laughs> Four years to work on a game would be a year more than they've gotten usually. Who knows? They might. You know, they could have started working on Legends Arceus in 2016, or they could have started working on Gen 9 uh, in 2019, and it comes out in 2023. We don't know. But that'd be cool. Kojima directing a Pokemon game when? Fucking never. I hope not. Another five-year gap similar to Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, there was no five-year gap. Unless you're talking, like, releases. But they were working on a lot leading up to Black and White. Like, during 2010, they were <laughs> working on, I don't know, Black and White, Black and White 2, and X and Y. Like, in that same year, which is crazy to think about. Also, didn't Diamond and Pearl come out in... Hold on. Yeah, they came out in late 2006. It's funny, I know all of, like, this stupid shit, and then I just, like, forget. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I thank you guys for coming out to the stream, though. It's really comfy. If you guys have any Twitch Primes, then uh, feel free to uh, use those. Or head over to Patreon. I can always appreciate any sort of support. Um, videos will be coming back at some point in July, for sure. Yeah, I'm probably going to head off to bed in 15 minutes or so. Because it's getting late. And super late. Ultra late. Omega late and alpha late. Sun and Moon compromise Z out of existence? Oh, wait, actually, you just reminded me about something. So, um, in an interview that I don't think anybody's really talked about, and I'm going to talk more about this on Twitter, um, but they mentioned that they had stopped, or they mentioned that they had cut a... or they had, like, tried Pokemon Snap. Um, and they hadn't, like fully realized it like there were attempts at pokemon snap games before the newest one and i think that's really interesting because i wonder what made them hmm. you know, i'll probably address that in uh, my snap video the photo feature in sun and moon based on snap maybe i feel like they've probably said that yeah <laughs> thanks for having these conversations with actual information we need more educators like you in the community thank you um but I, I encourage you to do your own research. I feel like even though, you know, I may like back up what I'm saying, a lot of uh, what I say can be guesswork in a lot of instances. Uh, like route designers are the really big one. Um, but like, you know, that's like relatively untapped. I don't know. I think generally, uh, as far as like community stuff should go, you should always, you know, find your own research and not take it at face value from YouTubers. I just got sent a, a magazine of, like, route design for Sword and Shield. How they handle skyboxes, grass placement, lighting. There's a texture that I have seen a million times in the files. <laughs> Very cool. When are we getting a Pokemon Coliseum 2? We already got it. 
It was called Gale of Darkness, and it was only marginally better. I wonder, a stadium in Gen 5 would be really interesting, though I don't think it was needed at all. Actually, have you played the Coliseum games? Uh, no, I think those games were really fucking bad. I mean, I can imagine Tajiri has a role in Detective Pikachu, or had a role in Detective Pikachu. I don't know to what extent, though. If it, so, like, one thing that I do want to point out is, like, I'm not immune to, like, failing. Um, with, like, guessing or information or anything like that. Because it's, like, you know, I don't want to be, like, fucking Cerebi Joe. Because he lives the unfortunate reality about having to be fucking fact-checked on everything. And it's, like, god damn, it's so exhausting. Like, I, I like, you know, digging for stuff and really trying to find interesting things to you guys. But, you know, a year from now, someone's going to take something that I said that could be outdated or, you know, and it's just going to, it's not going to be great. I'm more in the business of, like, identifying things and trying to figure things out as opposed to putting down, like, concrete uh, information. Which might sound weird, considering I'm, like, answering questions, but whatever. Yeah, they said they were they were filming Detective Pikachu. Um, before the first one came out, but I think COVID's probably fucked that up as it has with most movies and productions. Oops. Did I ever finish Pokemon Bushido? Uh, I've been too busy. I want to, though. That game was great. I think one of the people that worked on it, like, quote retweeted him, and they were like, wow, I can't believe Lutu is playing this game. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> That's cool, though. It was fantastic from what I had played so far. Genuinely one of the very few good fan games. Oh, you meant like a game. Um, what do you mean a rumor? Oh, a rumor of a port? I mean, I don't know about anything like that. They A new game is coming, though. They announced it a few years ago. <sighs> Don't know what's happened with that, though. Do 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 Yeah, I mean, I hope that means Pokemon scaling. I think that with the, you know, with the lesser amount of Pokemon that are definitely going to be in Arceus, like we're not getting fucking 890 or whatever, um, you know, I really do think that we're going to be back to like let's go levels of scaling and then they're going to transition that into main Pokemon at some point. Yeah, I was thinking about Detective Pikachu uh, today. I really like it. Because somebody was talking to me and they were like, wow, the Sonic movie is like the only good video game movie. I was like, first of all, that movie's fucking ass. It is literally, first of all, it's copaganda, which, okay, weird. You know, there was some of that shit in, uh, in Detective Pikachu, but it wasn't like the point of the movie. Yeah, I'm I'm not see here's the thing with triple battles, right? It's like people are like there are people mad about them and rotations being gone, but it's like they have to fucking like find an area or create an area to put them in in every game. 
And they clearly did not want to do that at some point. Actually, just like diminishing returns. Do 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 do. What a uh, discourse can I uh, touch on before I end the stream? You only expect 150 to 200 Pokemon. I have yeah, I have no fucking clue about that shit. Hopefully it's as many as possible without compromising, like, all of the shit that they need to do. Um, oh yeah, no, the word Poketuber was, like, a hot topic or some shit on, uh, Twitter. Recently. I hate that word, but you guys already know that. Yeah, it depends on how much new stuff we get. <sighs> Like forms and whatnot. Wait, why have I been gaining followers like crazy? I don't normally like pay attention to Twitter followers, but I've been getting a shitload. Like a week ago, I, I hadn't even hit 6k and now I'm at 650, lol. Fan made trailers that people usually say are done better than the games themselves. <laughs> yeah, those uh, those don't look very good, typically. But Poketubers, like, that's our word. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I just think it's cringe. I think that it represents, like, a group of people that are so distant from, like, current Pokemon content that I feel so weird and disingenuous to call, like, me one of those. Also, the word's been, like, fucking tainted at this point, so why should we even use it? It also, like, pigeonholes people. I don't know, it sucks. If you're talking about the Diamond and Pearl thing, yeah, it was kind of goofy. I wasn't really a big fan of it. But I'm never really a big fan of, like, the Game Freak Hire This Man shit. Much respect to anybody that makes, like, uh, fan creations, though, like, inherently. Even if I'm not... Even if I don't like them, you know, I still have respect. Because it takes, like, you know, creative fucking... You know, some level of creativity. Do 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 do. <laughs> what the fuck that was like an edited image of the anime and it was like a bunch of silhouetted champions <laughs> and it's just fucking goku but it's like a really well drawn like silhouette so it does it, it's like in the pokemon style but it has goku's hair DK as in Donkey Kong. Oh, okay. Hasn't Distant Kingdom, like, entirely pivoted on Pokemon now? Like, I hear he really loves BDSP, which... I don't know. Do I like the new Pokemon anime? Uh, I don't really have an opinion on the story, because 
I mean, depends on what do you mean about the Pokemon anime. Like, you mean the animation? The I only really care about the animation, I'm going to be honest. Like, sometimes some cool moments can happen, like, story-wise, but that is literally just it. Do 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 I mean mainly like story or characters, I don't know. It's designed for young kids and it's a weekly anime that has been going for like twenty years. I don't think it will ever get like remotely complex or interesting when it comes to Ash. And it's never really been interesting because it's always been adapting stuff from the games. When it deviates, it can be okay. Uh, I like what they did with Sun and Moon. Sun and Moon is like by buying away like the best the anime has ever been. Um, with Journeys a close second, I think I really like the the movies um, individually because they're much more digestible. I don't know. I I just don't really like. Like, 200 episode long seasons, they're not really for me. And also, X and Y look kind of fucking restricted as hell. He probably likes it because it's not Game Freak, I don't know. Maybe. That would, I guess, make sense for him. I mean, fair enough, you know, I'm not going to fucking judge, but. I mean, X and Y, like they, they did, they made a lot of strides animation wise, but they really had to fucking compromise with those dog shit character designs. For like 20 years, Ash looked like he was made out of wood. The story, is it good? Like, it's, it, to me, it's like the most bare bones, like basic shonen. With like nothing that makes shonen remotely relatable. Because I can't relate to Ash at all. So it doesn't even have like the, you know, the fucking like underdog kind of appeal. Because he's the main character that has been there for 20 years and cannot, you know, lose or win. They made Ash cool in the context of Pokemon. Ash has never been cool. He's always... See, I, I personally... I think Ash is really good. Uh, so the purpose of Ash has kind of changed. Uh, and like Ash is, was always kind of like this, um, you know, this character that has like, you see the world through like his eyes and I guess, uh, in a sense. Um, and I think he's really good at that. Uh, and then as time went on, people didn't want him to be that anymore because they weren't the target audience. And then when Sun and Moon rolled around, they went like slice of life for a while. So like that wasn't really the focus. And they're kind of doing a mix of that now. But instead, Ash is like already a champion. Um, so now Go, like, you know, you're seeing the world through Go's eyes. And I think that's really cool. Like, it's a really cool thing. And now Ash is like, oh, yeah, I know about this. So that's like a different approach to his character, which is good. It's a nice uh, shake up. Yeah, I don't know. I have nostalgia for Sinnoh, but that's mostly the movies again. And also the first movie. I do plan on doing an anime video at some point this year, and it's going to be a big project. But I uh, I won't spoil the uh, the details on that.
<laughs> Wait. <laughs> I just realized somebody in this thread called me a woman. Joe Merrick will attack that woman to defend Sword and Shield soon. Jesus Christ. I am a uh, he him, thank you. Bom, 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 bom. Family movie night in the server? Hell no. Fuck that. Bum 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 bottom bum 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 bottom. All right. Any uh, last questions? Just before I uh, wrap this up. The remake of Mewtwo Strikes Back is really interesting. I really, I like what I've seen of it. Um, I just, see chat, the thing you've got to realize is like, it's kind of a shot for shot remake, but also not. So, I don't know, it's just the humans that look kind of weird and the new human designs are great. What's my most wanted feature in a Pokemon game? Um, Hmm, that's very, very difficult. But off the top of my head, if I had to answer with a gun pointed at my skull in less than 10 seconds, I would probably say, uh, like, relationships in terms of, like, you can build up, like, supports. I think that would be fucking awesome and give way more depth to a bunch of side characters very easily. No, no, thank you for coming. <laughs> Best and worst gimmick they've added to battle starting in Gen 6. Uh, I don't know what you mean by a gimmick. That could be very broad. No. I, I hate the Vaporeon meme, man. It's so stupid. <laughs> Fucking acid armor. Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't worry about it. Those who know, they know. What do I think about the idea of side quests? Uh, same way I do about them in any game. Make them fun and not tedious and make them not fetch quests and I will be down. And give good rewards. It's just very basic like side quest game design. I think Pokemon has a, a lot of really cool ways to incentivize that with just how unique it is. Um, it's just like a monster catching game. All right, out of the three, you want me to pick a best and worst? I don't know. I have really complex thoughts on all of those. Can we... Choose different gimmicks. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah, Gen 7 had some, but they were very fucking basic and kind of bad. I wasn't really a fan of them. I liked the EV one, but that was still like just a glorified go here and fight X amount of trainers. I mean, I like and dislike things about Mega Evolution, Z moves, and Dynamax. If I had to say, I don't know, my favorite, probably Z moves overall. Um,. Least favorite, probably Dino shit. Like, Mega Evolutions are also pretty fucking bad. Click button and Pokemon become stronger. So strong that game is easy. Is like the worst fucking design ever. And also, most Mega Evolution designs suck ass. Like, Mega Sharpedo, like, what even is that? Nice teeth, dumbass. Your jaw is fucking disappearing into your anal cavity. I hate it. I hate Mega Manetric. Why did they do that? Oh, God. Yeah, I think... Well, see, Dynamax kind of gets carried by Gigantamax. 
What do you think overall the Pokemon animation is on Shield? You say people like it's all better. Uh, yeah, I think the new Roar animations that they added are fucking great. Um, I think Pokemon are the most alive they've ever been in the series. Um, when you look at all of the animations and you don't just cherry pick. Um, although I think it's generally a step down from Sun and Moon's animations because they had to work with a lot with so little. So I feel like, the, I mean, I don't know. You'd really have to, like, ask my opinions on, like, a specific move and compare them. I don't know. They could easily do evolution. Who's saying that they couldn't do an evolution to Absol? Mega evolutions don't replace an evolution. I don't think they've ever said that. The yeah, Hyper Beam looks good. Oh. They give a boost to a Pokemon unable to evolve anymore. I don't know if they directly said that. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Well, yeah, sure, but that doesn't mean they, you know, they can't for others. <laughs> you know? The better the move, the better the animation, typically. Unless you're like Draco Meteor. The textures for those meteors are fucking ugly in Sword and Shield. Also, no Z moves. So that kind of sucks. Yeah, true. Well, I like the colors in Legends. What do you think about the colors? I like the purple hue of the sky during the day. I think that's something that we very rarely see in Pokemon. Like sky, like good sky boxes. Or interesting sky boxes. I like... I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's probably going to change like my specific thoughts on the colors. And shit. Plus, we've only seen a handful of areas, so it's very hard for me to uh, say for certain. Okay, I'll stop stream in two minutes. And then and only then will I uh, hit the hay. Bum 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 Yeah, Legends, uh, it's interesting, for sure. I have no idea what you just said. That's how, that's how tired I am. Legends is important. Legends is interesting. And it's very dangerous. Yeah, I mean, of course it's empty. Yeah, like Rhyhorn with the blue hue. It's just really bold. You know, it feels like they're making a statement, even if it's not going to necessarily be good. Which is nice, like it's confident. I like it, you know. Yeah, it being, like, early Let's Go trailers are really empty. Early X and Y trailers were also similarly empty. And had, like, significantly worse graphics, particularly in the case of Let's Go. Different camera angles for X and Y. So, uh, I'm pretty excited. Oh, cautiously excited, if that's an easy way to put it. Okay, fuck it. I'm going to bed. Thanks for coming out to this very late stream. I'm sorry it was so late. Um... My life is currently a mess right now, so this is nice. But yeah, I'll probably do more of these like somewhat infrequently. I have no idea, 
But uh, we'll see. Anyway, peace out, guys. Good night. Thanks for coming out, and uh, take care.